Happy Merkelody moment. Today is the 23rd of September, and a lot's happening today. First of all, it's the first full day of autumn. The autumn equinox was yesterday, and so we are now in the season of autumn. And believe it or not, we have been uh, in the pandemic mode for about six months, actually. Today is not only the season of autumn that we honor here at the shrine with this marvelous new altar cloth. From uh, The fabric came from Debbie Matta and Kathy Moore put this together for us, this wonderful altar cloth to remember that the autumn season is a season when things that are green start to change color and turn brown. Autumn is the time of year when we rest down into the winter season, which, believe it or not, is just around the corner. And in two days, it will be September the 25th, and that will be Christmas is only basically three months away. So we are changing the season, we've changed the altar cloth, and we've changed our lives with all this pandemic. And our lives are changed, hopefully, for the better. And speaking about changing our lives for the better, there's two other things that are happening today. First, that is the feast of Saint Padre Pio. Padre Pio, as you know, is the great Capuchin saint, Italian from the southern part of Italy. I've actually visited his shrine and visited his grave, and his statue is here at, in our beautiful shrine, as well as we have in our treasury some magnificent relics of Padre Pio. This particular one on his feast day today that I've brought to share with you all is a piece of cloth that was used to bandage his hands. And as you know, his hands uh, had the wounds of Christ, this sacred stigmata, it's called. And so these relics, this relic especially that we have, is a piece of that bandage. And you can actually see the blood that is dried on the, on the relic itself. Because Padre Pio is a very important saint for the whole world. In fact, John Paul II turned today a memorial to be celebrated all around the world because of his importance as a man of promise, as a holy man, as a healer, as a reconciler, spending many, many days and many hours in the confessional. We celebrate his feast day, and I think today was a good day to remember one of his most favorite sayings. His most favorite saying that I remember and some of you may know is, pray, hope, and don't worry. Pray, hope, and don't worry. This is something that he would tell people who came to visit him uh, down there uh, in, um, in the wonderful church in Petronello the wonderful church where I visited, as I mentioned. So it's about praying, which means that we give everything over to the hands of God. And the greatest prayer that we can say is the greatest prayer of thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The great prayer of prayer, and, and, and connected to that is the prayer of thanksgiving, that we surrender over everything to God, and then we say, thank you, God, for whatever happens. Thy will be done. Thank you, Lord. These are the, the great prayers. And I think when Padre Pio used that wonderful little phrase, pray, he was actually asking people to do just that, to surrender to God and to be grateful for whatever is. But he also said pray and hope. And certainly hope is that openness that we've spoken about here on these Miracle of D moments. Hope is an openness to the... Um, to the wonder of life itself. Hope is an openness that whether life brings us beauty or terror, hope is the ability that we have to just keep on going. If life gives us beauty or terror, we keep on going, realizing that no feeling is final. Realizing that no feeling is final. Realizing that we just keep on going because we hope that in the middle of all that's happening, God is present with us. And so Padre Pio said, pray, surrender all, hope, give yourself over to that presence of God among us. And then finally he said, and just don't worry. There's so much to worry about these days. How can a saint like that tell us, 
don't worry. But he does, in the sense that um, we say at the Mass every Sunday here when we celebrate Eucharist, deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. Now, the old translation, which my friend Frank Matta always tells me is a better translation, he says, and free us from all distress. The old translation was, and deliver us from all anxiety. I think that's a better translation, all anxiety. Because you can be distressed, you know, but anxiety is a much deeper emotion. It's that experience of worry. It's that experience of being so caught up in our own little storyline that if something happens where our storyline is disrupted, we worry to try to get back control. Anxiety is about wanting to have control and finding ourselves losing control. And so when Padre Pio says, don't worry, he's basically saying, keep praying. He's basically saying, don't lose hope. He's basically saying, be free from anxiety and worry because God is with us. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come. And finally, today, September 23rd, this Wednesday, is what they call an ember day. And we don't hear about this as much anymore, but before the Second Vatican Council, right at the beginning of every season, fall, winter, spring, summer, there were ember days. And today is the Wednesday ember day of fall, and then Friday, the 25th, three months from Christmas, will be the Friday ember day, and then Saturday will be the Saturday ember day. These are special days of prayer and fasting. These are special days where we remember as the seasons change that all change is in the hands of God. Langston Hughes in a lovely poem put it this way. He said, oh dear death, your other name is change. And so in the middle of the change of the season, we have these ember days to remind us that we also must be changed by God's grace, by our prayer, by hoping, and by not worrying, giving it all over to the Lord. And in so doing, we will be changed like the fall season and the leaves that are changing up here in the north. So too, on this ember day, let us take a moment to ask God to negotiate the change gracefully. So happy Miracle moment, happy beginning of the fall season, happy feast of Padre Pio, and happy Ember Day. May we be transformed like the autumn leaves into something radiant and beautiful, without worry, hoping always, and remembering thy kingdom come, thy will be done.